Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla. Toyota has been caught lying yet again. And the numbers show they might have peaked in Europe right now, but they will start their very fast fall from grace in about eight months. Because everything that is set in place by the European Union turns out to be a match made in hell for Toyota. So, let's check it all out and let's dive right in. So, Toyota's European sales in the first quarter increased 10% year over year, outperforming the European market. So that is a very good news for Toyota, right? But I personally think this is the peak before the fall. As we usually see in a disruptions, the company that is being disrupted have their peak just before they come crumpling down. And Toyota's high sales are about to hit a wall in the European market next year. And at the same time, we are seeing Toyota saying things that I can only interpret as a lie. As they said, auto backlogs for hybrid, plug-in hybrid, fuel cell and battery electric vehicle products remain at high level, reconfirming customers' enthusiasm for our multipath approach for carbon reduction. So that is Toyota's claim. But let's just take a quick look at the sale numbers from Toyota because it sounds like Toyota has high sales numbers of all four powertrains, right? But for the Toyota brand here in Europe, 68% of the European sales in Q1 were either hybrids or plug-in hybrids, and 29% were ICE vehicles, and 3% were BEV, and 247 Mirais, the hydrogen car. <laughs> that Toyota managed to sell, well, that represent 0.08% of the overall sales. Trying to say that it currently offers a real choice between battery electric vehicles and fuel cell vehicles and their customers are really excited about these options seems misleading at best or just straight up a lie. It is clear from the sales figures that what Toyota is claiming doesn't match up with the actual situation. I of course don't know what the actually order backlog looks like, but looking at the sales numbers, it is clear that their hydrogen vehicles are a complete and utterly sales flop. And Toyota even admitted this last year, saying that the Mirai had never become a success. But of course, it has nothing to do with the car or Toyota. The reason Toyota gives to why the Mirai has been a flop is because of the lack of fueling infrastructure. Not the expensive price for fueling or the car itself. No, 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 no. Only fueling infrastructure. Well, that is also why someone like Tesla has built their own charging network together with growing their electric vehicle business. But Toyota only builds the car, not the infrastructure, expecting the government to step in and build this very expensive hydrogen fueling stations. But hydrogen fueling stations are so expensive just to operate that they are not really a reliable solution for the car industry. We have seen Everfuel close all its stations here in Denmark because they were losing too much money on operating them. And we have seen the same thing from Shell in Germany and the UK. So there is a real reason why the Mirai has never taken off. It is very expensive. And because of all the hydrogen tanks, yes, there are three of them, is taking up so much space in the car, you don't really get much room in the car or cargo space. And it's also a very boring car compared to any electric vehicle pretty much, as the Mirai does a 0 to 60 in 7.5 seconds and yes, that is the fastest version. Toyota has even admitted that this was not a success, but then at the same time, if you look at the website, it has been a success. 
apparently, as they write on the website. Toyota began development of the hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle back in 1992. We successfully introduced the Mirai sedan to the world market in 2014. So Toyota has been working on this stupid technology for 32 years and have had the Mirai out in the market for a decade and a quarterly sales in the green European market of 247 units after 10 years on the market is apparently a success. <laughs> Toyota is really living in their own little bubble, believing that people will just believe the crap we tell them. Because Toyota apparently also have a solid state battery that will make their hydrogen car completely obsolete if what they say about the solid state battery is true. So why even try? After 32 years, your sales of the hydrogen car represent 0.08% of your sales. When is it time to face the truth and just give up on this inefficient and very expensive technology? Well, we will have to see when they finally give up. But Toyota has another big time bomb in their system when we look at the numbers. And my guess is that 2024 will be their peak year for Toyota here in Europe. Not as high as 2017 when the whole industry peaked in the ICE car sales, but it will be a nice peak year for Toyota. But there are so many things coming in 2025 that will work against Toyota's success. Because when we look at the numbers here on this nice chart made by EV and Focus, we can see pure ICE car sales are not that high. So that is good because they're going out of business. But BEVs that are really taking off here in Europe are only 3% of their portfolio. So here they have a very long way to go. But the next generation BEV is not coming before 2026 at the earliest or maybe more realistically in 2027 and Toyota will not push the BZ4X or the BZ3X very hard as they are losing money on these vehicles. Toyota even admitted this themselves that they could not become profitable on this current BEV platform and that is why they have started all over to create a new one. And That is what they have shown us now that after tearing down the Tesla Model Y Toyota is now going to copy what Tesla that did, trying to get to profitability on BEVs that way by making giga casting, structural battery pack and so on. So that is just to say they will not have their next generation BEV in their lineup over the next two to three years, maybe even four years that they earn money on and therefore just as we see with Ford they don't want to sell too many as they are losing billions of dollars on their BEV production. So Toyota will not really be ready for the massive uptake in BEVs we are seeing right now in Europe and will rise even more over the next couple of years. Toyota is simply just not ready for this. But then we have the hybrids and that is really what is keeping them alive in Europe as 68% of their sales are hybrids. But that is going to be a huge problem in only about eight months because as I made a whole video about, the European Union is about to make the emission target in Europe stricter already next year in 2025. But at the same time, they are going to change the hybrid's utility factor because studies both from transport and environment here in Europe and the European Union themselves have shown that hybrids use three to five times as much fuel as originally thought and automakers claimed. So the European Union will significantly reduce the so-called utility factor of the hybrids which is the share of electric driving that the regulators use to calculate CO2 emission of the plug-in hybrids. From 2027, the utility factor of the plug-in hybrid will be fully aligned with how they are driven in the real world. So two to three times stricter. So all of this will work against Toyota's 68% of their sales. They will already next year get less emission credit for their hybrids and in only two and a half years they will be worth only about one third of today's emission credit. So even if Toyota could sell three times as many hybrids in 2027, they would only get the same kind of emission credits for them as they do on one third of the sale today.
And as Toyota sales already consist of 68% hybrids, they can't really sell three times as many hybrids in only two and a half years as two thirds of their sales today already consist of hybrids. So the only way Toyota will be able to hit their even stricter emission target next year and in three years time again is by making a lot more BEVs, which they don't want to because they will not be ready with a BEV platform that they can actually earn money on by then. And I don't think hydrogen is going to suddenly explode in sale as they have gone nowhere for 32 years. So what should suddenly change now? They are still expensive and inefficient. So I really think Toyota is heading for some very bad years over the next five years as their biggest powertrain they are betting on is going out of fashion as their true emission has come to light and 29% of their production of the ice powertrain will be going out of business and the hydrogen powertrain will go nowhere as we have seen over the last 32 years and they will not be ready with the powertrain BEV that is taken over in Europe and the European Union is slowly or fast depending on your definition of slow or fast but within the next three years they will kill off the plug-in hybrid here in Europe. And I see this as a good thing as many use the plug-in hybrid in the commercial fleet but because the company cars usually pay for their fuel as well the employees don't really want to charge up the batteries as they have expired because the fuel is free. Then the extra weight of the battery means that the plug-in hybrid emits more CO2 than a pure ice car vehicle. As transport and environment showed in their studies, commercial hybrids use about five times as much fuel as they get credit for today. And remember, most of these plug-in hybrids are bought with substantial government subsidies in the name of fuel economy. And it's all just a big lie, as they pollute three to five times as much as we give them credit for. So Toyota will definitely not have long before every everything goes sideways here in Europe anyway, as they are focusing on the wrong powertrain and not ready for the right powertrain in high volume production before the end of this decade, which I believe will be too late. And we will see the Nokia of the car industry take a bow and become a much smaller player if they do survive. Remember, Nokia also had their biggest year ever in 2008 the year after Apple showed off their iPhone. And they basically died only four years later. And that was not as capital intensive an industry as building a car. But it was all over from their peak year in just four years time. And don't forget, all of this work on hybrids is, no matter how we look at it, only a temporary strategy, as the ban of ice cars in Europe in 2035 includes the hybrid electric vehicle, as they are nothing but ice cars with a tiny little battery in them. So we already know that the hybrids in Europe only have 11 years left. So why even bother all this capital and time and making the car we already know is obsolete? It just seems very stupid and short-term thinking. So I don't really see Toyota surviving very long here in Europe anyway, and they will probably focus more on China and the US, as hybrids will not be seen as the polluters they really are, but as green alternative to the ice car. But as transport and environment and the European Union has shown us, if you drive your plug-in as an ice car, they pollute even more than a pure ice car. So let's see how long they can be living the lie in China and the US before they start following the European real world utility factor of the hybrids. And Toyota is definitely as confused as ever, <laughs> saying hydrogen is a success but at the same time admitting they are flop and lying about how happy customers are for their hydrogen cars even though their sales represent 0.08% of their sales. It's hard to find a car company more confused than Toyota. They are pointing in all directions and saying this is the way forward.
and thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.